Don't fight it. Don't fight it. <laughs> Just, I'm going to keep fighting it. Travel Thursday. Thursday. Travel Thursday. We just got back. We're we're in Singapore. We're in Singapore. We're in Singapore. And we're going to try to finish this podcast before the sun goes down. We don't have much time. We are jet lagged beyond belief. So welcome back to Travel Support Thursday, number 11. This is the first one that's only going to be on the new channel that we moved everything over from like our main channel to here. Yeah. Uh, if you missed all of that, then you're probably not watching this podcast. <laughs> Or just listening? realizing that. No. Now. Well, if you're listening, <laughs> if you're, you're li- still listening. If you're listening to this, there's no change. All that podcast stuff is going to stay right where it was if you're just an audio only listener. But if you're watching this on YouTube, we have a separate channel for the podcast now. So, what are we talking about today? What's Ooh, the topic? We got some. We got some good questions. So today we got some questions about travel planning as it relates to chase points. You start in the U.S. Mm-hmm. You're going to Asia. And then you need to stop off in Europe before coming back home so you're just to like the U.S. Around the world trip, like yeah. how do you do around the world trip? And for it's cheap? tough. We're also going to talk about something that I think we're not experts at, but how we stay healthy while on the road. And our 2024. <laughs> I have no tips. Our but... <laughs> 2024 budget travel destinations, and also in between all of that. A very fun, lighthearted BuzzFeed article in air quotes. Oh, man. We got some more BuzzFeed, man. BuzzFeed's really got their finger on the travel that pulse. That is right. Have never gone wrong, especially not with recommending a hairbrella as a must-have <laughs> travel item. If you missed that one, that's a couple of episodes back. This one this one feels a little bit more legit. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to recommend a product. Yeah, there's nothing more <laughs> legit than a hairbrella. That's for sure. Here we go. That's for sure. Okay, so let me read this first question here. Hold on, let me bring this up. You can tell we're in we're in cozy mode here. If you're <laughs> if you're uh, if you're listening only, we are under blankets on our bed, and it's almost sunset. Uh, okay, let me bring the laptop of truth here. Rachel Mack, 2954. Hi, hello, hey, hello. So the basic question here is: Rachel Mack's taking a trip to Asia that's ending in Hong Kong, hmm. and she then has to go all the way to a wedding in Lagos, Portugal. She has to make it all the way back home to San Francisco. So a literal full round the world experience. And she's wondering, how do I do this without just like burning all of the money that I've ever made in my entire life and having to triple mortgage my house? And this is a good question because this is not exactly an easy thing to do. So so we're going to break this down into three different sections, Mm -hmm. which is how do you get a flight from Hong Kong to Europe for free for not spending a whole bunch of chase points, which luckily she has. And then... How do you get to the actual wedding itself, which yeah. is in Lagos? And there seems to be some confusion here about like which airport to go into and uh, how to use chase which points country? to go through. Yes. And then how to actually get all the way back home from Europe. And I just want to start by saying here that a lot of this question seems to infer that you're using your chase points directly on the chase portal, mm. which is, there's no easy way to put it. Be gentle. It's... It's just the wrong way to do it. <laughs> it's just the wrong way to do it. And I'm sorry to say that as harshly as it is, but uh, you're never going to get as much value out of your points when you spend them directly on the portal than if you transfer them to somewhere else. And that brings me directly to the first solution to this problem. So I did a bunch of looking. Looking. Did a bunch of looking, and I found that the best way to spend your chase points is actually to transfer them to British Airways mm. and book a British Airways flight. That only costs 35,000 points per flight. From Hong Kong all the way to London Heathrow. It's one of their longest hauls that they have out of any of their flights. It's apparently very, very nice service. Very excellent. Only has a $43 additional fee. Oh, that's not bad. I was going to ask about the fees with British Airways. Yes, usually it's quite bad, but that's generally coming from the U.S. Mm. into London. Or if you're like transiting through London as Mm -hmm. part of it, that's where they hit you with all the fees. So... 35,000 points per person that's flying with you to get that direct flight from Hong Kong straight to London Heathrow. Amazing. And there's a couple of other options. I would say the best of which is definitely that Singapore Airlines flight from Singapore all the way to Frankfurt. So you could just take like a quick $100 flight to Singapore, spend a couple of days here. I mean, we're here right now. It's beautiful. The food's so good. And then hop on that Singapore Airlines flight for like 42,000 points per person. A little bit more, but I think that would be an even better experience than that British Airways flight. And then from Frankfurt. This is the like second part of the question, which is why can't I find Lagos, Portugal in the Chase portal? Mm. And it's because Lagos, Portugal doesn't have an airport. That's why you can't find it. Ah. The, The closest major airport that you can get to is Faro. Yes, and that's like 40 or so miles east, but that's the way that everybody gets into Lagos, Mm -hmm. generally, as they fly into Faro, and there's tons of cheap flights from there. So what I would do 
is whichever airport you end up flying into in Europe, I would just take a cheap flight into Faro and then just grab a taxi across to Lagos. Mm. But if you are talking about Lagos, Nigeria... Very th- different story. Then di- very different story. Uh, I don't want to go too far into it because I assume that you're talking about Lagos, Portugal. But if you're talking about Nigeria, let me know and we'll solve that one in the next one. <laughs> I will say this, that the Chase portal is very convenient so that you don't have to do all this searching, but it doesn't always get you the best deals. But what we usually mm. do is search on Google Flights to see what is in the realm of possibility. Yeah. Like what are some major airports in Europe that fly kind of affordably from countries and cities, major cities in Asia to Europe and then from those cities to your next destination. Yeah, or if you just want a shortcut to all this, there's a service called point.me that Mm. I've been using a lot lately. And it's just an award flight search engine. Mm. That's what it is. And uh, I think a lot of these have popped up over time, but this is the first one that's actually useful. Cool. In a lot of ways. So you can just type in like where you're going from, where you're going to, and it'll just print out a big list of how much it would cost the actual like flight that you would oh. get on, how much availability they have, and how you could like transfer points to oh, which airline sweet. to be able to book this thing. So it just kind of solves the whole problem for you. Okay, so I found something pretty crazy for this final leg, which I was very excited about and I think we're going to use now. So thank you very much for asking this question because it's going to help us get to Europe and home much cheaper than what we had originally thought. I found using a Chase transfer partner called Virgin Atlantic that for 15,000 points per flight, which is crazy cheap, you can fly from Madrid to SFO nonstop. That's wild. 15,000 15,000. So like if it is a family of four, that would mean 60,000 points total to get your entire family home to San Francisco. It's like a 10 or 14 hour flight or something. It's a long one. Yeah. The fees are a little high at 200 euros, but that's that's like way cheaper than any other option that I I could possibly find. $200 in the US can get you from SFO to LA. Sometime. Right, maybe. <laughs> maybe. So, yeah. so reposition yourself. You just take a flight from Faro to Madrid, which is like $30 per person, very cheap, or just even take a train. Yeah. That and, then, cool. and then book those award flights through Virgin Atlantic after transferring your points from Chase to there. Hopefully that's helpful. I know that's a ton of information, but summary is that all of it's possible and you don't have to pay very much to do any of it. And please, Don't use your chase points directly in the chase portal because it makes me sad. So our second question comes from Evelyn Grammer 8469, who asks, how do you stay healthy? I saw your bread diet on the Camino. (laughs) I was in Ireland and Portugal this year, and both places I found it difficult to get veggies. Thank goodness for markets where I can find fresh fruits. First of all, thank you so much for that question, Evelyn. And Second of all, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't stay healthy. We don't, we struggle with this all the time. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen, I mean, for those of you who've seen our last several videos, most, most of our diet consists of beige fried food. Yeah, because it's the cheapest to get everywhere and we're doing everything on a budget. It is yeah. definitely very, very tasty though. Uh-huh. I think we're eating well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but well. not healthy. <laughs> but I do think this is something that we struggle with yeah. for sure. I mean, we try we try whenever we're visiting a new place or any and when anytime we're going on a trip, we try to we try to try the local cuisine, we try to mm. try things that are on a budget, of course, because that's our main priority. Um but as it turns out like you say, it's really hard sometimes to find good veggies. I mean, Yeah. Part of us feeling fortunate enough to have a home base means that we can go home from our trips now and cook at home, make vegetables. We have salads every single day when we come back from a trip, yeah. mostly because we haven't. Yeah, when we're traveling, we just don't. Yeah, we feel like we need to. So we just like gorge on salad yeah. for uh, weeks on end. Also, I would say just generally in life, if I like go to a restaurant and I look and I see that a salad is like twenty dollars. I'm going to order anything else, any <laughs> other option on the menu, because that seems so not worth it. And I'm so like value oriented in my brain that I'm just going to order whatever the most amount of food Meat I can get, and potatoes. <laughs> which is always French fries. Uh, <laughs> and and it's 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 a real problem. We on a daily, my mom messages us and says, I saw in your latest video, <laughs> you guys eat French fries again. Mm-hmm. What? What? What's going on? Right. I'm worried. I'm worried. I don't think you. rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so. But I would say, how do we keep healthy? Uh, I mean, we don't, but we do. 
walk like 13 to 17 mm. miles. Yeah. We, we go out and we walk basically all day, every day for the entirety of the time that we're here. Part of that is cheapness. Yeah. Because we don't want to pay for a taxi or transportation if we don't have to, if we can just walk it. And part and that's of that... that's a great way to see the city. Yeah, and the part of that, that is in. walking just makes us happy. Yeah. I mean, we did the Camino two times. Yeah. It's not an accident. We we like that. <laughs> we, we love long walks. <laughs> I also think that something that we've been trying to do a little bit differently on these last few trips have been sharing foods a lot more. So I think mm. before we felt like we wanted to each get our own dishes to try different things. Um, but we realized we were eating probably far too much and far too much unhealthy foods yeah but we do appreciate the question i think it's very flattering that you would ask that, that you would think that we are oh, healthy do you think that's an assumption that we well, are healthy or i don't know i would ask like a stay i would ask yeah. a healthy person how they stay healthy but i wouldn't <laughs> ask a person that i thought was unhealthy how but they then stay our bread healthy. diet on camino yeah. it's not I think that this is something that we're thinking about a lot yes. recently of trying to get more healthy yes but also trying to do that without spending a lot of money and so far even after like a dozen years of traveling around the world, I don't think I've solved this yet. Yeah, I but I will say it. in our last in our last trip, like in New Zealand, we were able to do this pretty pretty well because we had access to a cook stove, of course, in our camp and mm -hmm. in our camper, and we were able to go grocery shopping. So like, it depends largely on where we're traveling and what mode of transportation we're taking yes. when we're traveling. But I will say in larger cities, it's definitely we hear you. It's harder for us to like find a vegetable to eat so <laughs> yeah. i think we have been whenever we pass grocery stores i mean like here in singapore there's so many great amazing hawker stalls that sell so many different kinds of foods yeah. but also there are awesome produce stalls so we've been loading up on a lot of fruits here because mm -hmm. they have amazing amazing tropical fruits here yes yes i'd say this is definitely an area that we're trying to improve in yes. but we appreciate the question moving on to uh the buzzworthy news mm. article of the day and okay. i put article in quotations because it's buzzfeed and it's not an article it's more like a listicle it's Is time listicle for one? the news <laughs> so i feel like we do a news one every every uh i feel like we do a news one in every episode yeah this, i love it this part makes me happy it's All right. my favorite it's my favorite thing to look for what i mean i love your questions have too. we talked okay what okay. contentious news topic so have we chosen today this BuzzFeed article is actually a list of compiling people's responses to things that they've discovered while they've traveled in other countries that they feel like make the U.S., where they're from, feels like they're living in the 1800s. Oh, okay. So ingenious things that they've yeah. discovered while traveling abroad. My mind immediately goes oh, to Japan when you say this. It, it made the list like, of like five or six times. Of places where I went to and when I got there, I was like, whoa. They are living in the future. Yeah. And everything that I had experienced before this was just invalidated immediately. Number one on the list, Aruba has a machine that puts on sunscreen for you. Basically stand mm. inside this like receptacle thing and okay. it sprays it on you. It's kind of like a spray tan, but with sunscreen. That's so smart. I hate putting on sunscreen. I know you do. I hate it. I know. I would pay almost any amount of money for this machine. So it sprays it so you don't have to, you know, get your hands greasy. You know, yeah. You, yeah. And see, so, yeah, because you just I, get in and you never feel like you've like rubbed it in enough, you know, <laughs> sunscreen. I, I know that there's a lot of ways to take that sentence and please don't clip that out of context and appreciate that. But I think that there, I think, you know, like you put on all this sunscreen and you never really know if you like, yeah. if you did it right. I and know. then invariably you like go out to the beach and you come back and you just have this like huge red spot <laughs> just somewhere on your body that you're like, oh, I'm sure I put on sunscreen there, but nope, it's just like, it just and you can never have enough sunscreen, which is what I love about yeah. this thing. Okay, number two on the Check. list is no surprise, but one that I think we we absolutely need, mm -hmm. and it's the fact that a lot of public restrooms in Japan have buttons that allow you to play music while you're using the restroom. Oh, they play uh, naturey sounds. Yes. I mean, it just yeah. I think it's why just not? and also I think it's the bidets there as well. Just like the the like intelligence and attention. The put Toto Washlet making like the going to the bathroom experience really good. Mm. Japan, South Korea also does this yes. really well. Yeah. Singapore does this like kind of good, better than most, yeah. but not nearly to the realm yeah. that Japan does. 
And I think that after using bidets now, and we bought one for home, after like living with it now for a couple months, I just can't imagine not living with it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's definitely changed the way. I mean, it's just something that we we take for granted. Yeah. Like, yeah, going to the bathroom in a public bathroom sucks. <laughs> yeah, Let's make it's scary it a little bit and more mostly gross and more anonymous, please. Yes. And can we also talk about how in the US, you know how and I can't figure out why we've done this, but they leave like a gap at the bottom of the door. You know, like it's like <laughs> Two to three feet off the ground, and you can see everybody's feet. Oh, but and like, why? In middle school, <laughs> ours was a gap at the like, the head. Oh, so they could like look so over and see. So you could actually just, see your face right. when you're like. And then going there's to also the little gaps on both sides yeah. of the door, which people can like peek in at, and it's just so not private. And yeah. it makes using a public bathroom in the U.S. just. I mean, it's bad enough in the first place, but then. To have it where like people can look by and be like, "Hey, what are your feet doing? What kind of shoes you wearing? Like, why does your face look like? Why? Yeah, exactly. Why? Yeah. In what world is that necessary? Bath and I think traumas, that, mm, bathroom traumas. And I think that Japan really nailed the idea that bathrooms should be like a private space and a comfortable space, mm -hmm. and that if we throw a little bit of money at technology to make this experience yeah. better, everybody's lives get better immediately. Yes. And I fully agree. That after using like the bathrooms there and stuff like that, that it just feels, you know, you like look forward to it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> You're like, it's oh, yeah, true. this is, this I is, love going this to This is the spa time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It feels also, relaxing. There's nature sounds playing. It's just like, it's wonderful. It's not a bird, but I, I got to show you the sunset. It's just, it's just beautiful. I Sorry, know. audio listeners, uh, to describe this to you, it is bright pink and blue. Going from top to bottom, and there are just streaks of like pink and blue, and there's a mosque in the background, and you can just see the sunset like kind of enveloping the mosque around it. Very beautiful. It's incredibly beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, what's okay. the next thing? Okay, this one I thought was interesting, but someone said that in Warsaw, Poland, there's a whole section of the sidewalk specifically reserved for people looking at their phones. So it's like <laughs> on the side of the road, and then everybody else that doesn't want to get stuck right, behind right. them they 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 move on over i don't know uh -huh. i don't know if that like is ingenious to me or it's mm. like promoting bad behavior i don't know well i think it's I inevitable know. right like yeah. it's just accepting that out in the world like there's a subsection of people probably more than not who are just going to be staring at their phones yeah. the entirety of the time that they're outdoors not seeing any of the world that they're in yeah and i think that those people being like separated from the people who are paying attention to what is happening as they're walking is a good idea you know i think it benefits both people it was interesting because it reminded me when we were in seoul i mean seoul has crosswalks that are lit up basically mm -hmm. and so when you look at the bottom like when you're looking down at your feet or your phone when it's your turn to walk the the crosswalk turns green which is i think is amazing yeah and and promotes safety i guess mm -hmm. Um, speaking of traffic lights, apparently in Moscow, there are entire pole lights, like for the red light, green light, stop lights. Mm -hmm. um, the entire pole lights up the color, either red or green. So there's no way you miss the color change. Like, you know, sometimes, oh, sure, that like, makes sense. sometimes the sun is perfectly shining on the red light and you tell the police officer, no, I mm. didn't, I didn't run the red light. I just couldn't see it. Or you're on True your phone story. while you're driving and no, you just don't me. see a change. That wasn't me. <laughs> just, well, okay. So quick question for you. Uh -huh. Your first couple of times out of the United States, what do you think was the first thing that you encountered hmm. where you were like, whoa, like the way that they do this, we should take this back home immediately. Like, I can't believe that yeah. we don't have this. Capsule hotels in Japan. Oh, mm. That was Because that was my first time I had ever traveled by myself. And and I didn't want to pay a hundred dollars a night for a hotel, sure. and and I was getting to a place really late. I have, I have, I have trauma from like sleepovers as a kid, and the thought of sharing the same space, like a bunk bed with somebody where they could see me, where there's no curtain, no privacy curtain, nothing, like no privacy at all. Yeah, freaks me out. Like I mean, at sleepovers because. I wasn't so afraid to go to sleep because I was afraid of bothering people or people would make fun of me for talking in my sleep. Like I just would just stay up the entire night until everybody That's else. That's one fell way asleep. to solve it. <laughs> and so I think capsule hotels really changed the way that I thought about, yeah, budget travel, solo travel, saving money. And 
they make them so cool. They're so clean. They're so futuristic. Some of them, I stayed in one that was like railroad themed, like train themed. Yeah. I don't know. I just think, I think it's a really cool way for people to travel on a budget and by themselves. Yes. What about you? I think for me, the biggest thing that I saw that really like changed the way that I look at the world Ooh, is, the world. is, and this was kind of per, everywhere throughout my travels, but I saw that people, and this was especially true in healthcare, so I'll, I'll start with that, hmm. was that they would go to the doctor frequently when they were healthy and then expect the doctor to then keep them healthy. Mm. And I think that that was such like the other side of the coin from the way that we think about healthcare in the United States, yeah. which is that you only go to the doctor when you're, when you're about to die. And <laughs> even then you're gonna like Google as many other like DIY at home options. Web MD. Do whatever you possibly can to avoid having to go there. Yeah. And the only time you're at the doctor is when things are really bad. Ah, and then you're disgusting. expecting them to cure you of that thing. And it's a whole different relationship. Um, How did you, when did you notice this? So it first started with actually car maintenance. With oh. with car maintenance, yes. It was the first time that I noticed this. I started talking to people. Uh, I think this was in Australia when I was there because we were, we were like driving a camper van all the way mm. down the coast. And like this camper van was super old, but it was still working. And I looked at all like the maintenance records they had. And I saw that it was like every three months, like clockwork. And I was like, mm. whoa, whoa, like that's an entire different way of thinking yeah. about maintaining things. And then I went across Asia and I saw that everyone was doing the same thing. Like they would get a little cough yeah. or whatever, and then they would immediately go and see the doctor. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was so crazy. I'm like, they must be bankrupt. They must be spending millions of dollars every single year like, just like oh, going no. to the... Going they just to have the, universal health care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was that, it was that realization over time mm. that like, the entire model was flipped on its head of yeah. like you go to your service provider, whatever that is, whether it's your mechanic or your doctor or whatever, and you say, I'm healthy. Yes. I'm healthy. I would like to stay that way. What yeah. do I need to do to make that happen? It is wild because, mm. I mean, I think, what was it, 2021, we mm. were in Thailand and we got in a little motorbike accident. It wasn't a very big deal, but it was one of those things where like, we should just get checked out since we're here. We had, you know, travel health insurance. But it, it, it never once crossed my mind that this was something that I would ever consider. And I, I knew medical tourism was a thing, but I had never participated and never thought that it would be like I never wanted to because I sure. thought, oh, I, I'm afraid. You just to. assume it would be the same as home yeah. where you like you go in. It'd be so expensive. And you'd ask them like, hey, how yeah. much does this cost? If you did that in a hospital back at home and you asked them how much does this cost, they would they literally could not tell no. you. And you and wouldn't even get a bill till like three months later well, and we it'd be in, a lot. Yeah, we were in Chiang Mai and we told them, you know, I hit my head. I was wearing a helmet, but I just want to get checked out. Mm -hmm. They got me registered in five minutes. I saw a neurologist in ten minutes. And then they told me even before the appointment how much the neurologist appointment was going to cost. I think it was $20. Mm -hmm. And then they offered me a CT scan or imaging. They told me how much that was going to cost. But they gave me the option, which I think is what amazing. <laughs> and they offered it to me the day of. Uh -huh. And then I left and I was like, I'm not going to do the imaging. And they called me a couple of days later just to check in with me and see how I was feeling. And I was like, yeah. What? Is it feeling a little Halloweeny, dark and spooky? It, it kind of looks at Mine sorry, is. the sunset a lot sooner than we thought and I'm realizing now the light is very very bright on my face and now we are telling spooky ghost tales. I think one of the ones that I thought of it's not super tangible but and I, I know like this BuzzFeed article is really really fast. I keep calling it an article, it's not an article. This BuzzFeed list is really <laughs> hilarious and lighthearted, mm -hmm. but one of the ones that I thought of, I, I mean, we were in Munich, what, in 2020, visiting some friends, and we met a friend of a friend. And this conversation that we had with him kind of changed my whole perspective on, like, the kind of place that I want to live in and the world that I hope that we all get to live in someday. So yeah. the story was we were crossing the street. It was the middle of the night. Nobody was around. Jersh decides that he's going to jaywalk. He's just, and, and everyone, all of three of our German friends kind of went, <gasps> how dare you? Yes, it was, it was, it was such a big audible deal. gasp and coming from basically anywhere in the U S jaywalking is not only encouraged, 
it's people are disappointed at you if you don't. It's just and and I know this is not specific to just Munich or Germany. I mean, everywhere there's so many countries that we've been in where jaywalking is definitely, definitely like not allowed. You're mm. fine for it. People just follow the rules. But what like that conversation that I had with this friend really changed my entire perspective. And he explained it. He said, it's a really big deal to me and maybe to people here that people don't jaywalk because I follow rule. I follow the rules because I know that other people follow the rules. It's a way of peacekeeping. Mm -hmm. I have peace knowing that if I follow the rules, I know that other people will. Anytime that I hear a rule, I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. But like, I'm not going to do that. But the fact, the <laughs> fact that <laughs> he, not for me. but the fact that he equated it to peace, yeah, that like touched my heart in a way that I cannot, I cannot get it out of my mind. Like I do want to live in a world where everybody is following the rules because they know that the rule is there to protect them mm -hmm. and protect other people. And if I follow them, I know that other people will follow them and we're all in this together. It just, yeah, but who's like, who's making the rules? Get out of here. <laughs> What if, you know, I, just, I, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I feel that as much like I understand that it probably creates like yes. a more peaceful society, but then everyone has to agree on what the rules should be and but, how but they should go. But wouldn't you want to live in a world where everybody is feeling, I mean, obviously yeah, I don't utopia, know what it's like to like, live there and I don't know the nuances, mm, but when he described yeah. that in that way it was the first time that i realized oh there are places in this world where people are accountable for one another mm, mm -hmm. yeah and i do yeah i kind of like that idea i like yeah. that idea it just made me made my heart sing mm, mm. travel thursday okay what was <laughs> oh yours boy, oh boy what else did you think of anything else? i'm just gonna quick rapid fire a few here how about this where in Paris you can get seltzer water or flat water out of a out of a machine. In That's Italy pretty cool. Too. Morocco hid their utility poles under cool uh, palm trees, <laughs> which I think is great. You can get an umbrella out of a vending machine in Hong Kong. It makes perfect sense. And the most German thing, maybe of all time, grocery stores have a special place on the back of their shopping carts for beer. I love it. What about the one in Sweden where the trash bins and the recycling bins are actually shaped like the actual things and objects that you're supposed to put in them. So <laughs> a plastic bottle, that bin looks like a plastic bottle. Cardboard box, that bin looks like a cardboard box. Yes. So smart. Yes. This last trip to New Zealand really just boggled my mind, but produce stands on the side of the road from the farms, oh, farm yeah. fresh produce stands, yeah. Talk about a thing that would never work in the United States, not for a second, people would Sad just steal things. from it or do, or yep, <sighs> nobody would trust that anywhere in the US. Like, could you imagine that? I would love that. It would be amazing, it'd be amazing. I've been noticing in a lot of different countries, Japan, Korea, there are, when you go to the restroom, I don't know if this is true for the men's restroom, but for mm. women who have children, there is like, the toilet seat, but also seat for your child or baby. Oh. And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, until I saw that, I had no idea. I asked my friends, what do you do with your baby when you go to the bathroom? <laughs> That's true. They're just, like, running around. And they, especially with that, like, two-foot yeah. gap under the thing, like, they could just leave. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they could just, like, crawl out and well, say, they say and they see you later. Yeah. My friends are like, oh, well, we usually pass them off to our partners and mm. or, you know, bring them in the stroller, but they have to wait. Right. I just, it's. Yeah. Wow. Right. As non-parents, I would never have thought of that. But now that you bring that up, I'm like, that makes Mind perfect blown. sense. Right. You have this little agent of chaos that is trying its best to escape or do whatever you don't want it to do. So, yeah, you need a little seat to put them into yeah. to have them do that. And I think this last one is one that I think all of us can, can agree on. Oh. Is that in South Korea, they have just a little pocket holder for your phone. So that way you can put your phone like into this thing. Oh. So that way when you're using the bathroom, you can just like, you know, watch whatever movie you want to watch or like browse the thing or do whatever. 
and it's just right there for you so that way you don't have to do the thing where you're like sitting down on the toilet and then you got to pick the phone out and then out of your pocket accidentally drop it in the toilet and then drop it in the toilet there is like a special little holder for it and i think all of us can agree that 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 is just a public good that should just exist everywhere throughout planet earth how many of these things on the list are are toilet related (laughs) i don't know a surprisingly large i don't know okay all right, moving on from this one. Our if you, final question. If you guys have any out there of things where you like yes. left the U.S. or left home, and you and you went somewhere and you were like, "Wow, that is amazing." We need to bring that back home. Put those down in the comments Tell below, us. please. We I would need love to hear, to hear this. I love these stories. Yes, they're yes. so so good. This is why we travel. Okay, so Toilet last question upgrades. here. Upgrades. Let. <laughs> That's it. Toilet glow up. That's the whole point of travel. The entire point of travel is toilet upgrades. All right. So Tom Grulty, final question of the day here. Uh, congrats again for a really j- stellar job on the New Zealand video. Oh, Thank thanks. you. Thank you. Can't wait to see what's up next. Singapore is what's up next. Season two, um, baby. All right. So would love to take your pick for 2024 budget friendly travel mm, destination. That's a great question. The Very short answer to mind. this is wherever travel influencers are not going. <laughs> or they're where they're currently at. <laughs> yeah, where they're currently or at, no, but where they're not going to be. Maybe where they are mm. where they were two years ago. So I can tell you where it's not going to be just right off the top. It's not going to be Rome. And it's definitely not going to be Paris next year because they have the Olympics. I, I think Vietnam is going to be like a big up and coming travel destination mm-hmm. next year. I think Vietnam is also put in a ton of work mm-hmm. into making their country really accessible mm-hmm. in a lot of ways that it wasn't before yeah. and really safe and really like comfortable to travel mm-hmm. to, especially these like East coast beachy destinations like Hua Hin um, and some of the other islands around the area. And oh man, there's, there's so much great stuff. We're going to Vietnam in a couple of weeks here and there's so much to look forward yeah. to there, but I think they've really put in the work to really start to bring a lot more tourists to their mm-hmm. country. Applying for the visa was one of like the clunkier things about going to Vietnam. And I think removing that out of there for a, a whole bunch, it's almost like 50 countries that are visa free now. I'm, yeah. That's my pick is that like budget travel destinations. I think Vietnam with their new connections to the US and to Europe through Vietnam Airlines, mm-hmm getting people there and then getting people around the country yeah. and then having like really nice hotels, great, super fast internet, like all the stuff that travelers want, right? Like yeah. and great food and like cool stuff to see and do and beachy destinations and cultural stuff. And just, I, I feel like they've really, We're started, really excited. Yeah. I feel like they've really started to nail it. I think um, I agree with that. And I've, I've never been to Vietnam, so I'm very excited for this leg of our trip too. Mm-hmm. Um, a place mm-hmm. that I'm really excited about exploring that we've never been but I've heard a lot of great things about that's also budget friendly is Albania. Mm. Apparently it's got beautiful, beautiful nature, beautiful architecture. It's really clean. It's beautiful. That's what I hear. And it's really affordable. (laughs) Okay. Maybe we should go. Okay. Up and coming. Um, And I think that for a lot of people who want to go to Europe next summer, Mm -hmm. but don't want to get all wrapped up in the Olympics, ludicrous prices and absolute shenanigans that are going to be like enveloping most Mm. of central Europe. I could totally see a lot of people going to Albania and that yeah. area over there. I think it's an up and coming travel destination. So much cool history to offer there. So much incredible culture there. The yeah. food, so good. And I think it's still kind of flying under the radar as far as tourists are concerned. And uh, us travel influencers haven't ruined it for everybody yet. Um, Have you been there? <laughs> no, I haven't been there. Oh, but you I've, said the food's I, so good. Yeah, well, I've watched, I've watched a lot of other. Everyone just it. says. The food's so good. Oh, yeah. The mm. big is. YouTubers like to use their favorite phrase when they eat meals. Oh, yeah. Dude, I think all of us mm. just like watched Mark Weens <laughs> and just saw that he was getting like 13 million views of him just like eating something spicy and going like, oh, wow, couldn't you believe how good that was? And just like really overdoing it that I think all of us just took that cue as travel influences at the same time. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we need to really oversell this. We got to we gotta oversell this food. Have you ever had a french fry before? It blew my mind. I mean, that's... that's it was so good. That's, that's, that's ah! with every single french fry. I do love french fries. French fries make me very... Okay. Taiwan would make that list for me too. Mm. It's very, very affordable to find yes. a good hotel there and to eat very affordably there and to travel around. The trains are incredibly affordable to get from different parts of the island. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot more people are going to be going to Taiwan. It's this just one of year. these cool, underrated. I mean, I'm biased, but I think it's a really incredible, yeah. incredible country and just 
Food's so good. And it's, yeah, and it's one of these places where, like, for $100 per day, like what we had for a yeah. budget, you can eat spot on. every meal out at a restaurant. You can stay yeah. in a pretty nice hotel. You can take public transportation to go and see cool stuff. You can actually partake in activities. Yes, and you can, like, do stuff while you're there and, like, all on a yeah. very reasonable budget. And I think it's one of the very few places that you can go and do that where it's like super safe mm -hmm. and the food's super good and there's so much history and so much culture yeah. and so much cool stuff to see. And people are super see. friendly and welcoming. Yes. And yes. even if you don't speak the language, it's quite quite easy to get around a lot of the, yeah. the bigger cities. All right, that is it for this one today. It's fully dark. So if you have any questions that you want answered in next week's mm -hmm. podcast, please just stick them down below. We'll answer YouTube them next comments, week. Please. YouTube comments, yes. Or email us or send us a yeah. smoke signal or um, leave those comments down below and we will answer them next week. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>